My, my next guest has, uh, Bobby Fisher uh, will stay with us, and, and my next guest is coming out. Now, we only have a minute here. He's written a book that's got perhaps the, <laughs> there you are. Why do you move so? Uh, unsexiest title of the year. It's called Legal Implications of Emergency Care, but it's certainly a fascinating subject, um, and so is the man who wrote the book. Neil Chayat is a Boston lawyer, and uh, they say they're the best kind. Will you welcome, please, Neil Chayat? Hi. Chayat? Chayat. Chayat. Oh, God. How can I be so? Let me, would you go off stage and let me introduce you as Neil Chayat now, which is the way you actually say it. Is that right? That's right. 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 A doctor is driving down the street, and he sees a head-on traffic accident, and the guy goes pitching out into the street and is bleeding. Why doesn't the doctor always stop? Well, uh, because he's afraid he's going to get sued. Really? That's what is, uh, in a survey a couple of years ago, the 50% uh, of the doctors asked actually admitted they would not stop because of the fear of legal liability. 50%? Uh, right. And so, to, presumably, that's happened to them, and they have not done it in many cases. Presumably, I think, you know, yeah. if 50% if actually admitted it to a, a researcher, that the percentage is probably even higher. And uh, yeah. this is why there's been such a need to, uh, to pass various statutes. And the thing that is really troublesome is that there's not a single case in the entire country mm -hmm. where a doctor has ever been sued ar arising out of this situation. There's well, not then one. where does the fear come from? Uh, television. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, have I contributed? Uh, no, you have not, but uh, for some reason, uh, a favorite theme of the mass media is the young doctor who stops at the scene of an accident and gives mm -hmm. aid and thanks he gets for saving a life or preventing further injury as a lawsuit. And this is what happened on... Uh, oh, there was doctor. a Kill Dare episode. Right, right he was uh, returning from a cocktail party. I, I didn't know he drank up until that show. Uh, it certainly uh, doesn't but, look uh, like he does. No, it doesn't look the type. Uh, no. uh, but uh, there was a woman having a baby uh, there at the scene of the accident. The, car had gone off the road and she was having a baby and the baby died due to a prolapse cord. Uh, there was never any allegation of negligence at all but uh, the jury was, uh, a prolapse cord can happen and it, it mm -hmm. was nothing to do with what he did. No negligence was alleged. He was said to have done nothing wrong. His viewers wouldn't stand for that and uh, but the jury was impaneled and they came in with a $60,000 verdict against uh, Dr. Kildare and the average doctor watching that show and they, they do watch it like we watch the defenders of Prey Mason uh, yeah. uh, would uh, be very concerned that this does happen. The Saturday Evening Post also ran a story. The Reader's Digest at one point ran a similar story. And, and yet you say there's no case in which No cases, and we thought, well, perhaps there were some uh, cases that had been settled out of court. Mm -hmm. So the American Medical Association uh, did a survey of all the insurance companies and found no cases. They mailed yeah. 40,000 questionnaires to individual doctors, found no cases. And, mm. and uh, this is why uh, uh, it's a myth, and that's one of the reasons I, I did the book was to yeah. try and I yeah. uh, do something about that myth. I know you have a personal experience to tell, uh, and uh, also that Virgin Islands story. Would you tell that? Sure. We, yeah. we, we have a message from our local stations, and we'll be right back. <laughs> talking with Neil Chad about um, what, what, what we were talking about. T tell the Virgin Islands story. Um. Well, this really troubled me a great deal because uh, wherever I would speak on the subject, and this was all over the country, the, the question would be asked, uh, well, how come you haven't heard of the doctor who got sued in the Virgin Islands? And, Mm -hmm. He got sued for $200,000, and how come this one had missed you? And I was very concerned, because you see, I've been offering a reward for a case. I was actually trying to find a case in any way I could, and I was afraid I was really going to get hit uh, on this one, because everybody knew about it. Mm -hmm. I finally uh, found out the name of the doctor. I called him and asked him what happened to him in the Virgin Islands, and he said that he was vacationing there, and he looked out of his hotel window, and he saw a man who was, had fallen on the dock, and he went down, he saw the man had been electrocuted by using an electric drill. Yeah. He tried to uh, revive him, and he couldn't, and as a last-ditch effort, he uh, opened the chest of this individual, massaged the heart, but to no avail. And at this time, that was an accepted procedure. And, mm -hmm. uh, but the man died, but uh, he was never sued. And this is where the fact uh, diverges from the fiction. He was uh, actually thanked by the uh, victim's family uh, for his efforts in regard to the victim, and uh, mm -hmm. I wish I could end the, the story there, but uh, he, he did get arrested uh, for practicing medicine without a license uh, in the Virgin Islands. Uh, preliminary to a charge of murder, which was going to be brought against him as soon as the results of an autopsy became known, which would be in about six months. They, they do a very thorough job of uh, autopsy in the Virgin Islands. And he was asked if he could remain in his hotel, and uh, uh, he, uh, it's relevant to mention at this time that the uh, the governor of the Virgin Islands, uh, I think until last August, was a direct appointee of the President of the United States. The President 
at this time was John Kennedy, and uh, this was a Cape Cod uh, physician. Um, I don't know how we got word to the mainland, a bottle with a note or something like that, but uh, uh, he, the pressure lifted. He was told he could go back as long as he promised to return to the Virgin Islands if they wanted to prosecute him for murder. He said, you just let me know I'll be down on the first plane. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, he, did, uh, he did have to hire a lawyer in the Virgin Islands and, uh, to watch out for his interests. When he got back, he had to hire a lawyer at the Cape to, uh, uh, because you know, only lawyers can communicate with one another. And uh, then he got a bill from the Virgin Islands lawyer for $3,000, and uh, he ended up with uh, this bill still pending. He hasn't paid it. And that uh, uh, resulted in the passage of the Massachusetts Good Samaritan Law, which has nothing whatsoever to do with that situation, because that was not a lawsuit situation. That was a licensure or a criminal uh, uh, act. Uh, that is, if somebody practices medicine without a license, that is a crime. It has nothing to do with a lawsuit for damages on, on behalf of the victim. But so. just a minute. Why did they bring the, the charges against him? The family thanked them for trying to save right. the man's life. And then who instituted well, the charges? Uh, the it? charges were instituted by the, uh, the government uh, the, in a criminal case, of course. It's always the government and the police that initiate the charges. And they feel mm -hmm. that, uh, felt initially that he should not have interfered in this situation, that uh, a local doctor should have been called. And, you know, what was this uh, American doctor coming down and uh, ah, working so on? There, there was a little bit, uh, there was some... Uh, as I understand it, some uh, uh, racial overtones to the situation as well. And, but mm. uh, the, the point is that that case has been widely cited as, as being responsible for the, for the fear of the physician. And, how a doctor uh, can get in how trouble. How a doctor can help. get in trouble, and there's no truth to it. And yeah. by the way, uh, in this uh, country, almost every state has an exception in its medical practice laws. So if you're riding and you see an accident, you're a doctor in Massachusetts and you're riding in New York, you can stop and give aid and you will not come under the laws yeah. of that state because there's an exemption. Only four or five states uh, don't have it. And they've, they're in an easy to read chart in the back of the books. So you keep it in your glove compartment, you see the accident, you get the book out. Uh, you want to take a break? Uh, to... well, I think we better, <laughs> okay. yes. We have a message from our local stations. We'll be back. How do you know? Could you tell them what you told me during the break about one of the reasons the doctor said he might not stop if he saw a gory yeah, accident? I, uh, I'd uh, talked to a large group of doctors and after it was all over, one of them uh, came up to me and uh, he looked around to make sure no one was, uh, was looking and he said, uh, do you, you want to know why I don't stop? And I said, yeah, why? He said, well, uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, and that, uh, that remark troubled me, uh, you know. <laughs> so, Particularly if you're the yeah, patient. And then I, right, and then I did some uh, looking into that and I found that the handling of, of trauma cases is not uh, the subject which is, is routinely taught in medical school and that many physicians... They don't teach them to deal with emergencies? Well, uh, they, they have some time, of course, in emergency rooms when, when they're an intern, but as yeah. far as a, a rigid, uh, formal course in the curriculum, there just isn't any in the handling of this type of, of situation. And I think this is one thing we have to do is, is not only uh, amongst lay people uh, to increase the knowledge of how to handle these situations, mm -hmm. but also in the medical schools to be sure that every physician, regardless of his specialty, will know how to, to handle this type of situation. The uh, the physician, of course, is ethically bound to give aid in these situations, and there's he only is. Is he, that in his he, oath that's in his, in, his, uh, in his oath and in the principles of ethics, without question. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not legally bound to. That's the problem. None of us are bound to help uh, anyone in distress. You you have to help your spouse. I'm, I'm sorry, but th that's just uh, the way it is. Uh, that's you have to ends. help your children, yeah. and that's just about it. Under the way our laws develop, if you see a, a, a stranger or a person on a beach drowning. Uh, and you have, uh, it's not a family person or you have no particular relationship to that person or you're not a lifeguard or police officer, you don't have to help that, that person under our law. That's where all the trouble comes from. And this is why in the continental countries it's, it's developed very differently. There you must help out. If you don't, you're subject to arrest and fine and imprisonment. And a How doctor, would that come about? A policeman would see policeman you would, not Well, there was a stabbing in a, in a French cafe. And yeah. a lot of people uh, gathered around and uh, the man was, had died who had been stabbed and it turned out there was a doctor there. Who didn't help. He was, he was arrested and he was fined very heavily. That's and a we, good idea. We, we have only one country? state that has done that. And Vermont has just passed a statute mm -hmm. which requires any person, not just a physician, if he can do so without danger to himself or without substantial interference in the duties he owes to other people. I'm not too clear on those words myself without danger to himself or substantial interference to duties he owes to other people, uh -huh. he must help, then if he can do so, he must help an individual who's in distress. 
And if he fails to do so, he can be arrested and fined a hundred dollars. That's under a new Vermont law, and it looks like in Vermont. That's a doctor or, or any never, person, or any, any person, person who sees a person yeah, in distress. Yeah, it would, it would but apply, of course. Of course, you can always claim you didn't know what to do. I all suppose you can do so. Is sit and uh, talk soothingly to right. the person. Or something. All we've done thus far is try to pr pass these Good Samaritan statutes, which now about 46 states have. Uh, Governor Rockefeller vetoed the New York bill, but it went through over his veto. He vetoed it because he said that. The doctor doesn't need the protection of, of special immunity. It's the layman who doesn't know what to do when he stops and needs the protection, but the bill mm. passed over the, the veto anyway. I think the Vermont uh, is, is a much more effective way of doing it. I okay. was uh, Sir. just going to mention one thing about the ethical implications. There's only yeah. one case that I know of where the ethics have really been enforced, and this was a postman who was shot in New York City in front of a doctor's office, and he thought this was his lucky day to be shot in front of a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he went upstairs, and he went into the doctor's office, and you, and you know how the uh, receptionist can be. Just a moment, young man. <laughs> uh, where are you going? Uh, and, and, she, she, and he said, well, I've been shot. And she said, well, just have a seat. And, uh, and she called the doctor, and the doctor said, send him away. And, and uh, he said, uh, well, OK, uh, but I, I, he was really in bad shape. And he said, uh, could you call the police? And she called the doctor again in Baton. And, and the, he said no. This is from no. the intercom, or did right. he I make a house know. call into the other part of the office? <laughs> no. uh, he said no, just get rid of him. And the man was escorted to the to the outside, and he went down the steps and he <laughs> fell. And I, if you fall in the street in New York, from what I understand, you can be there three days before you're uh, found. Is that <laughs> yeah. true? Um, but he was found quickly and was uh, he did live. He had no lawsuit against the doctor because again our law does not has not run in that direction. But the doctor was suspended for 90 days. I'm so glad. From the uh, 90 from, days from the Kings County Medical. Society. Uh, so, uh, but uh, this is why I feel we've, we've really got to, uh, one, get rid of the myth. I don't think the Good Samaritan laws help because yeah. in one state they had 50% they had wouldn't stop, as I say. They did the survey three years later when they had this Good Samaritan law that's supposed to protect the physician, only 49% would stop. Uh, they lost a percent. Uh, so, why? Uh, well, the doctor, the fear is so well established in the doctor's mind. And also, uh, another doctor said he didn't want to get involved. I, I, well, I don't want to get involved. He knows what to do. He's not really too worried about getting sued, but he doesn't want to get involved. And this, uh, this also troubles me. We've really got to change our way How of functioning. How many other things here. are there that doctors fear that there isn't one case? Uh, well, none that I know of. You see, uh, there, there, there is a tremendous malpractice problem. There's no question That's about it. That's a separate it. thing, malpractice. Separate th but uh, it's transferred over into fields where there is no reason to fear. Mm -hmm. There is true. We had one insurance company in Massachusetts last year had a 99% loss ratio. That means they paid out. 99% of all premiums received in claims and suits in malpractice. And even, even uh, areas that have not had problems, like psychiatry, never used to be sued. Psychiatry, they could handle the aggression of their patients better, perhaps. But now, there was a doctor who had in therapy a, uh, a patient, and uh, he, the patient was institutionalized. He let the patient go, and uh, to go to his, for therapeutic reasons, to go to his wife's lawyer's office to discuss a domestic relations problem. They were all sitting there quietly, and the patient jumped across the lawyer's desk and, and bit the lawyer's uh, nose off. Uh, and the, In an unpleasant uh, way. Unpleasant, right. And how much uh, do you think a, a, lawyer, a lawyer's nose is worth, uh, by the way? <laughs> On today's market, I, I wouldn't uh, But the, uh, the suit was not against the patient who was mentally ill, but the suit was yeah. against the doctor for allowing this known uh, nose biter or uh, <laughs> dangerous person to, 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 to go around. And $200,000 was, uh, was the verdict in that case. So there's great reason to fear the law, but mm -hmm. not in the area of emergency care. Yeah. What a bizarre story that is. Thank <laughs> you.